हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू बाजीराव आई एस अकेडमी द हिंदू न्यूज़ एनालिसिस सो टुडे इज थर्ड जून 2024 एंड वी हैव फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स टू डिस्कस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन एंड बिफोर डिस्कसिंग ऑल दोज इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज़ आर्टिकल्स लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व पास्ट लेक्चर्स प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन सो द क्वेश्चन वर्स द स्पेस टेलीस्कोप मिशन so ultraviolet transient astronomy satellite or it is also called as ultrasat and this will investigate the secrets of short duration events in the universe and it was developed by which of the following agencies is the question so the correct answer for this question is option a israel so ultrasat is uh you know a mission a telescope mission of israel and if you look at the explanation part of this particular mission so the ultraviolet transient astronomy satellite is a mission which is being developed by the israeli space agency which is also known as isa and in fact this is an ultraviolet observatory with a large field of view and it will also investigate the secrets of the short duration events in the universe so the short duration events in the universe including supernova explosions mergers of different neutron stars and all these events can be observed and investigated by this ultrasat ultraviolet transient astronomy satellite and in fact nasa will launch israel's first space telescope the ultraviolet transient astronomy satellite so this is uh, israeli's telescope mission and it will be launched by nasa okay so this is explanation part of this ultrasat and now we have one more important prelims practice question for today so the question is partnership for global infrastructure and investment is an initiative of which of the following agencies or institutions so the options are a world bank group b g7 c g20 and d new development bank so this is also a very very important question so please answer this question in the comment section and the correct answer i'll be providing you in the tomorrow's class and the first article with which we are starting this discussion is with inequality lead to growth so is there any chance that inequality will lead to the growth right so uh, in countries like india the problem is higher levels of inequality that has been growing so because it is said that rich becoming more richer and poor remaining more and more poor and the wealth is also concentrated only in few hands and that is also a very concerning because in india 10 percentage of the total population or 10 percentage of the population have been holding around or more than 75 70 or 75 percentage of country's wealth and this has been indicating that there is a wide or huge inequalities that were existing across the country right so the context of this particular article is that rahul gandhi uh, of congress recently made some statements regarding the redistribution and at the same time the polarizing rebuttal of prime minister narendra modi's and he also has brought the topic of inequality to the forefront because you know the concern is that in recent times uh, india has been seeing the exceptionally high levels of inequality so these high levels of inequality and a lot of uh, you know experts have been demanding that there should be a proper redistribution of wealth and income among various sections of the society so therefore we will be able to bridge the inequalities and at the same time we will be able to ensure that the living standards and the life of the people can be improved significantly now we need to uh, will uh, will understand how inequality actually harms the democratic process of our country because some others argue that it is actually beneficial so the inequality is actually beneficial because now see whenever someone uh, is investing in one particular sector he is known as an entrepreneur and higher levels of income or profitability from the investments which are being made by one entrepreneur is always acts as an incentive for the entrepreneurs for example when someone earning a huge amount of money through their investments of course that will result in the growing level of inequalities right so 
when someone in investing and they are earning a lot of income and wealth so that could be considered as an incentive for the entrepreneurs to invest more and they can start their businesses so thereby when they invest more you know uh, because of the high profitability it creates employment opportunities for the people and it would also result in uh, you know improving uh, the social indicators economic indicators and the living standards of the people because see when an entrepreneur uh, is earning money and he is investing the same money to further uh, enhance his business further enhance his profitability of the business so he is creating a lot of employment opportunities and those employment opportunities certainly would result in the welfare of the people and for inequality can have a deleterious economic effect as well okay so on the one hand some people says that inequality is a good but on the other hand inequality also has exceptionally disastrous or deleterious economic effects also so for example when we consider one form of inequality that is concentration of monopoly of power especially among the entrepreneurs or the capitalist sections of the society so this of course have a negative effects on the consumption and welfare and growth of the people because uh, you know if done properly the wealth taxes and redistribution can have a positive effects for example imagine that one particular person uh, you know um, so out of 10 persons so one person is holding around 75 to 80 percentage of the total wealth out of 10 persons so now what government have to do government have to impose a wealth tax on the individual and extract some money from the individual uh, one that one particular individual and redistribute the income so that it will reduce the inequalities in the society because concentration too much concentration of wealth in the few hands would not be a good suggestion also okay so now monopoly of power and consumption how monopoly of power actually uh, have a deleterious effect on the consumption of the people right because a uh, billion is draw their wealth from the monopoly right so in an economy when any industry or any manufacturing segment or any product goods so they have the monopoly they can be able to fix their own prices and extract their own prices because there was only one single uh, industry which has been producing or which has been engaged in that particular products so therefore billionaires very often draw their wealth from their monopolies okay so through the monopolies they draw their wealth and in fact this also allows them to set the prices instead of being determined by the market now very often the prices are being left to the market market determines the prices but when we talk about these billionaires who have the monopoly over the uh, products what they do they actually set their own prices the prices which are actually higher than the cost of production for example one particular product the cost of production is 80 rupees but since due to the monopoly they what they do they fix the prices at 150 rupees right so this is how through the monopolies they are earning a lot of profits and lot of income and thereby it has been facilitating the concentration of wealth in few hands and thereby propelling inequalities also however for any given level of money so you know uh, when we talk about the wages the real wages or any other kind of wages wages of the laborers actually wages of labor determines the consumption or the purchasing power for example that you know there are two workers right so there's a worker one worker a and worker b right so worker a is earning 1000 rupees per month and worker b is earning 500 rupees per month now who will uh, spend more whose purchasing power is more so worker a spends more right so therefore the wages of a labor determines the purchasing power when there are strong monopolies in the economy the purchasing power would be obviously low so purchasing power a low purchasing power actually means that the economy would slows down economy would not perform better because majority of the economy is based on the demand consumption purchasing power of the consumers 
and these monopoly effects are currently being experienced as the cost of living crisis affecting the developed economies now across the world the new phenomena is that the cost of living has been significantly increasing and in fact that is a problematic aspect because the cost of living uh, of people has been increasing significantly when cost of living has been increasing the prices of the people uh, uh, the wages of the people are uh, significantly lesser that would also uh, be problematic and in this uh, scenario the phenomenon of greedflation okay so greedflation is another variety or another form of inflation now greedflation actually means that company for example imagine that there is a company a so greedflation means that companies rising their prices to increase the profit margins okay so they wanted to increase their profit margins and thereby artificially increasing the prices of the goods and that is where it leads to the greedflation increasing prices through a greed of the but uh, you know the producers of various goods so this greed inflation has been taking place uh, particularly in the backdrop of multiple demand and supply shocks and recently we have observed these multiple demand and supply shocks primarily due to the pandemic okay so because of the pandemic we have seen the demand and supply shocks and apart from demand and supply shocks we have also seen that you know there is a, a supply chain uh, issues also so because of all these factors the greed inflation is another issue which has been uh, resulting in or contributing to the higher rates of inflation in the west and uh, the salaries or the wages of the workers are lower and on the other hand the prices or, or uh, the high rate of goods have been further leading to the inflation like situation okay so this has to be changed so however the profit maximizing level of output under a monopoly is less than under a competitive economy implying the welfare uh, implying that a welfare loss okay so see understand this essentially means that the profit maximizing level of output under a monopoly whenever there is a monopoly uh, you know the output would be significantly lesser whenever there is a monopoly because you know when someone have dominated uh, the economy so that effectively means that uh, someone have dominated the production of goods a particular good so that effectively means that that particular uh, individual will not increase the output if it in, if he increases the output then he would not be able to earn uh, extra profits for example imagine that company a uh, is involved in uh, production of you know uh, spectacles production of spectacles right company a now what this company will do company will know, even though it has a lot of capacity to produce uh, you know around 1000 spectacles per month it will not do so it will just produce 100 spectacles per day in order to maintain such a huge demand because it has been enjoying uh, you know the monopoly okay so but however whenever there is a competitive economy along with company a there are number of other companies also which are also involved in producing these spectacles and then the economy would become much more competitive and the output would also be higher okay so however the presence of these monopolies can actually lead to the lower real wages and lower level of output and investment so that would be problematic for the economic growth and economic development okay so now how inequality and growth are interlinked how inequalities actually impact uh, the growth of one particular economy see understand that the total increase in the income of the workers and good sellers is greater than the initial investment for example an initial investment of 100 rupees is being initial investment of 100 rupees is being made in production of goods and services but on the other hand when you talk about the income of the workers and the sellers of the goods it would be much more higher because of the multiplier effect 
okay so there is a multiplier effect and because of this multiplier effect the uh, overall incomes of the workers and the sellers would be much more higher and this process would be called as multiplier effect and in this multiplier effect the investment rises incomes of the people by a greater proportion than the initial investment right for example initial investment is just 100 rupees and even though the initial investment is 100 rupees the profit can be 1000 rupees over a period of time because taking into consideration number of factors and this multiplier effect or the multiplier process actually depends on proportion of consumption from incomes okay so a multiplier effect or increasing incomes from the investment actually depends on few things okay so what are those few things for example if there is a high demand uh, in the economy and apart from the high demand there is a high consumption uh, because of the incomes so all these factors would significantly enhance the multiplier pro multiplier process so an unequal economy will put lesser incomes in the hands of those with a greater propensity to consume so when people are consuming less so that would significantly impact the demand in in an economy so that will lead to the weaker expansion of the overall economic growth and that would be problematic okay so see uh, income inequality here actually uh, you know it also means that there is an inequality in the distribution of the wealth or income across the economy and that would result in the significant concentration of wealth leading to further negative consequences okay so uh, how redistribution and growth are interrelated see the cure of redistribution can prove more harmful than the disease of inequality by affecting the job creation now see uh, imagine that uh, if we have introduced the progressive taxation in an economy right progressive taxation uh, in an economy you now what happens with the progressive taxation so we are uh, taxing the majority of the profits or the income of the uh, you know rich or the entrepreneurs now when we are taxing the higher uh, on the rich or people who are earning much more doing these businesses so this is kind of a disincentive on the part of them okay so this disincentivizes them so when it has been disincentivizing them they'll not be able to invest again on the economy and that will also have the negative impact on the employment creation when people are not investing because of higher taxes that would significantly reduces the employment opportunities and because of that reason the cure of redistribution now for the disease of inequality the cure is redistribution okay so for the disease of inequality the cure is redistribution however for this particular disease cure of redistribution could be more harmful because it impacts the job creation so that's why it is said that it could be more harmful however in this context one must make the proper distinction okay so there should be a proper distinction between what constitutes wealth and what constitutes the pro profit of an individual because investments occur under the influence of future profit expectations so whenever an entrepreneur thinks that uh, he is going to earn a lot of profit in the future okay so when he thinks that he is going to make some profit in the future then only those uh, profits would be invested again and that would create a lot of employment opportunities also across uh, the country but on the other hand wealth is accumulated due to the past profits so therefore it is very important that we must make a, a distinction between wealth and income however redistribution of wealth can actually generate forces to spur growth even if some billionaires pull back on investment now the author is trying to say that redistribution of income in an economy is more beneficial rather than uh, simply promoting inequalities or simply not doing anything on growing levels of inequalities because if wealth is uh, redistributed across uh, different segments of the society an egalitarian society is created that will significantly increases the incomes of the people 
from different segments and at the same time it would result in multiplier process and that would becoming much more stronger so thereby benefiting the entire economy so the next a very important article is with respect to the nifa virus now we'll understand what exactly is this nifa virus and how scientists have generated these virus like particles in the lab and what are the advantages of these virus like particles now briefly understand the context of this particular article so scientists of institute of advanced virology tonekal so they have developed a novel way of generating non infectious nifa virus like particles so since they are non infectious but nifa virus like particles so these particles plays a very important role in drug designing drug manufacturing vaccine development okay so since nifa virus has uh, the highest mortality rate of 80 percentage developing these uh, you know nifa virus like particles in laboratory conditions will actually help us making rapid strides in the drug designing and drug manufacturing okay so this virus like particles actually mimic the wild type nifa virus now we'll briefly discuss the details of this so the methods offer a safe and effective alternative platform for developing neutralizing antibodies against the nifa virus okay so in a biosafety level 2 laboratory so in fact this uh, you know uh, indian uh, you know this Institute of Advanced Virology so I A B Institute of Advanced Virology team has come closer for developing this monoclonal antibodies now we very often knew that these antibodies what what is the function of these antibodies so they fight against antigens which are the disease causing uh, organisms uh, you know paths so therefore these antibodies especially the monoclonal antibodies fight against the antibodies and these antivirals against the nifa virus and other similar pathogens so this nifa virus is a zoonotic virus now what exactly is this zoonotic virus so zoonotic virus essentially means that the virus which transmits from the animals to human beings and covid-19 pandemic is also a uh, a zoonotic uh, disease and rabies a zoonotic disease in a similar way nifa is also a zoonotic virus and in fact it is highly pathogenic highly pathogenic in the sense that you know it could easily spread from one person to other person or you know uh, there is a higher probability of uh, infecting with this nifa virus if one person comes in contact with the infected individual okay so this is highly pathogenic paramyxovirus and the fatality rate is around 80 percentage among the affected individuals okay so the virus uh, neutralization virus neutralization assays are very important okay so these virus neutralization assays are very important so because these uh, virus neutralization assays will help in development or evaluation of various vaccines and even it will be helpful in immunotherapeutics so vaccines against the nifa virus okay so vaccines on immunotherapeutics and at the same time conducting the basic research into the immune response and even the pathogenesis of nifa virus okay now what exactly is this virus like particles so these virus like particles you know so they are non infectious so even though they are looking very similar to the virus like part uh, you know virus but they are non infectious in nature okay so they don't cause any infections so those are known as virus like particles so these virus like particles are molecules and they are closely resembling the virus but even though they are closely resembling the virus they are very often non infectious in nature and in fact they have a recognition as an effective quantitative platforms for studying these viral binding and entry kinetics of viruses however the advent of nano biotechnology and hibit tagged these virus like proteins makes it far more sophisticated okay so the genome of this uh, nifa virus 
encodes six major proteins and these proteins and their structures are very important in the vaccine manufacturing and drug designing also so this genome of niv encodes six major proteins including glycoprotein g fusion protein matrix and nucleocapsid no long polymerase and even phosphoproteins okay now we'll briefly understand what exactly is this nifa virus okay so nifa virus is a genetic uh, genetic virus so genetic virus is a virus which spreads from animals to human beings and at the same time it is also a bat born virus so because of it is bat born we can say that it is a genetic virus and you know that causes the nifa virus okay so uh, it actually causes this nifa virus infection among the human beings and other animals also so whenever any person is infected with this nifa virus there is a high probability of mortality so there is a high mortality rate of this nifa virus and in fact numerous disease outbreaks have caused by nifa virus have occurred in southeast africa and even the southeast asia also okay so developing of these virus like particles for nifa virus will have uh, you know crucial applications for manufacturing uh, drugs vaccines and neurotherapeutics also so symptoms what uh, what are the major symptoms of this nifa virus the symptoms including fever headache muscle pain vomiting and sore throat are the major symptoms of nifa virus now apart from major symptoms so these symptoms can be followed by more serious conditions including dizziness drowsiness so these are all the uh, symptoms of nifa virus and at the same time when we talk about the uh, medicine or drug for the nifa virus there are no dedicated drugs or vaccines available for the treatment or prevention of nifa virus infection okay so there is no such vaccine is being available for the nifa virus right so next a uh, very important article uh, there is a chance that uh, you know uh, you may get questions on this particular volcanic eruption in your prelims examination and at the same time mains examination also so tonga volcano could cause unusual weather for rest of decade now how it cause uh, unusual weather for the rest of decade and why these volcanic eruptions having a multiplier effect or different effects on weather systems we'll understand okay so this hanga tonga or it is also known as hanga api okay so it has erupted on january 2022 in the pacific kingdom of tonga okay so it has uh, erupted in this pacific kingdom of tonga and when the volcanic eruption took place it created the tsunami now one of the reason for tsunamis you know and other thing that you have to understand that this honga tonga uh, sorry uh, honga tonga volcano is also located in the pacific ring of fire okay so pacific ring of fire so since it is located uh, in the pacific ring of fire so there is a probability that it is a volcanically active region and there is a higher volcanic eruption now whenever there is a volcanic eruption uh, in the sea it could also cause the tsunami waves okay so that could trigger the warnings across the entire pacific basin and it also sent sound waves around the globe multiple times after the eruption of this hunga tonga volcano now what are the major climate impacts of this particular eruption okay so what are the uh, climate impacts that is being associated with the volcanic eruption now it is said that because of the eruption of this hunga tonga uh, volcano the ozone hole which is now uh, almost recovered has further widened now there is it has created a ozone hole again after the eruption okay so because uh, last year's extraordinary ozone hole right so it has created a ozone hole and as well as much better than expected summers in 2024 and this eruption could have a lingering effects on our winter and weather for years to come because see so whenever the volcanic eruptions have actually took place they uh, spew a lot of ash into the atmosphere now this particular ash block these you know 
sunlight or insulation from the sun and thereby keeping the uh, region below this particular volcano uh, comparatively cooler and apart from that it releases several other chemicals into the organic chemicals into the atmosphere and that has further resulted in widening of the ozone layer now what are the consequences of widening of the ozone layer so it would result in increasing uv penetration into the earth's atmosphere and that is having a lot of negative implications on wild flora and fauna human beings wild flora fauna human beings and even the agriculture also so that is a major concern here and when we talk about the uh, impact of uh, uh, you know temperatures or uh, increasing or decreasing temperatures we can say that you know uh, the hunger tonga impact on temperature is very very small okay so uh, it will not increase the temperatures significantly however it is said that uh, its impact on temperature is just 0 0.015 degree celsius however the northern part of because see uh, as, as i have already told you that whenever the volcanic eruption takes place it spews a lot of ash into the atmosphere and this uh, actually blocks the sun rays and then uh, reflect back into the space and because of that reason there is no probability that this will significantly increases the temperatures of the planet earth and uh, the other thing that you have to understand this is where this honga tonga uh, uh, you know volcano is located and this is the pacific ring of fire and this pacific ring of fire is a volcanically active region because you know it is located across the tectonic plate boundaries and at the same time the honga tonga volcano is located in the pacific ring of fire so all these factors have uh, you know led to the volcanic eruption and this volcanic eruption having a multiplier effect on the weather patterns and uh, even the widening of the ozone hole etc okay so after that the other thing other very important thing that we have to understand here is that when volcanic eruption took place it has also released sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere okay so uh, the sulfur dioxide coincide con, uh, you know contained inside the smoke cloud okay, okay so this is where uh, the smoke cloud sulfur dioxide is also consisted and this ultimately leads to the cooling of the earth's surface for a very short period okay so when sulfur dioxide is being released it will lead to the cooling of earth's atmosphere for a very short period of time this is because of sulfur dioxide transforms into the sulfate aerosols when it is in the atmosphere the sulfur dioxide would actually transforms into the sulfate aerosols and then which send light, sunlight back into the space okay so that actually reflects sunlight back into the space and it will uh, reach it will not reach the surface and this shading effect means that surface uh, will cools down while until the sulfate sulfate falls back down the surface or gets rained out over a period of time okay so when we talk about this tonga island so tonga island is located or it is part of the polynesia okay so this is where in the pacific ocean tonga island is located and it is part of the oceania so this is all the all this region is known as oceania in the pacific ocean and tonga is an island country in the polynesia okay so there is a micronesia and polynesia in the pacific ocean and tonga island is part of the polynesia and it is a group of 171 islands of which 45 are inhabited okay where people live and in fact the country spans across 800 kilometers north south and it is surrounded by number of other countries such as Fiji, Wallis, Futuna, Samoa, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Niu and Kermadec. So all these countries are being surrounded by this Tonga island in the Polynesia. And since it is located very close to the uh, equator region, the Tonga actually experiences the tropical rainforest 
climate that the climate we uh, very often see in the andaman and nicobar islands and this western ghats region so similar climate is being observed that is tropical rainforest climate so the economy of tonga is very often relies heavily on their remittances from tonganians who are living uh, you know abroad so particularly in countries like australia new zealand and united states now remittances means whatever they earn so their earnings will be sent uh, back to their families okay so that would fuel the economy and apart from that tourism is also one of the mainstay of the people who are living in this tonga uh, country so the economy actually focuses on small scale industries small scale industries like handicrafts agriculture products and in fact they also disproportionately dependent on tourism and even the communications also so when we talk about the people the different groups of people who are living in this tonga island the largest ethnic group in tonga is tongan and they are being followed by mix of tongans chinese fijians europeans and other pacific islanders okay so this is about the volcanic eruptions of this honga tonga volcano and its uh, impact on the weather conditions right so that's all in this lecture and thank you so much so please subscribe to our youtube channel and also hit the like button thank you